Tak Patrick ten Brink je, je, bude působit ve fun, funkci generálního sekretáře European Environmental Bureau. EEB je evropská síť environmentálních nevládních organizací, která byla založena už v roce 1974 a má dnes 180 členů z 38 zemí. Je to vlastně taková velká síť organizací, které mají vliv na to, co se děje na úrovni Evropské unie, na, na, na ty politiky a strategie. A Patrick ten Brink vystudoval environmentální ekonomiku na University College London a již 30 let působí na různých expertních pozicích v Bruselu. Od roku 2018 byl Policy Director FEB a v posledním roce také jako zástupce SG, a nevím, co je SG, Jirko. Secretary General. Secretary General. Tak, takže Patrick, you are welcome to. Okay, thank you very much. I'll only only one question, Patrick. Uh, will you share your presentation yep. or share I'll, sh I'll you share it? Share. I'll share okay. It. Yeah, yeah. okay, can you can you see the slides? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, and also just to confirm what, what Jan Dusik mentioned in the beginning. Um, uh, we've been having also open conversations with uh, your permanent representation in the ministry and thank you for that uh, on discussion of the of of our 10 green tests and also looking forward to having you join us on friday yeah so thank you um i'm going to talk about uh the 10 green tests for the czech presidency um we at the eb every six months we create 10 tests for each of the presidency and then we assess them um, and we've already shared some thoughts with your, your colleagues, and I'm delighted to share the thoughts here. I think on the first slide, I think it's, this is uh, visually the same thing as, as what Jan Dusik said, that your Czech presidency is part of a trio with a, inheriting a number of files from the French and bringing a number of files to the, to the Swedish. Um, you've got the issues that are inherited, but you also have international processes and wider developments, as we've seen, unfortunately, with um, Ukraine. Um, and then, of course, there's emerging issues which can affect the agenda. Um, and then, of course, you then leave a legacy for the, um, the Swedish presidency. So it's all three together. And I'm just going to present some ideas for you, but we also developed a dozen demands for the trio. So just as a big picture, uh, first of all, your leadership, your presidency will be critically important six months. Uh, your leadership is, needs to help us uh, in Europe on a number of issues. First, um, we need to respond to the Russian war in Ukraine and the implications. Um, it's, it's fundamentally important to uh, show solidarity. Uh, and this, this war is, under, is reminding us that Europe is a peace project. Uh, second of all, the commitments that have led to, from this war is for fossil fuel independence, or there's a need for fossil fuel independence, and that's led to new policies. Uh, the Repower EU is a package that was put on the table just a month ago, and it will have major implications for the Fit for 55 package that Jan Dusik mentioned, and the wider issue of energy security that I understand is a priority for your presidency. It'll be also important to recognize that the war is being instrumentalized by some people to undermine the Green Deal. So it's important for the Czech presidency to help defend and promote the Green Deal and resist the false solutions. Our analysis is that the Green Deal actually helps uh, address a lot of the concerns. Um, fourth is that we need strategic resilience of the European economy and resilience of our democratic institutions. And we hope that the Czech Republic will also engage in this area. And we understand this is important to you. And then of course, there's a whole normal dimension of policy is, is um, as we need to advance transformative policy files. Um, but in the context that we're talking about here, we need to respond to create even better, even more resilient future and strengthen the files. So the Fit for 55 package that, that Jan mentioned needs to be strengthened. And then, of course, we need to advance the critical dossiers. Um, importantly, the speed of which um, the, the dossiers advance uh, under the Czech presidency will define a little bit whether or not the, the, the files can be finished within this commission and parliament. 
because the Commission and Parliament finishes in 2024 with the European elections in June 2024. So we have 10 tests um, and I'll present, uh, I've given you slides with three examples of each test. I'll only focus on one in the interests of time, um, but I'm happy to share the, the wider ones. So the first one, of course, is, is address the climate emergency and promote sustainable mobility. Um, and within this, the key challenge facing us now is to basically integrate the Repower EU ambition in a strengthened Fit for 55 package. So there's discussions on strengthening the renewable energy targets, uh, strengthening energy efficiency targets. We need to ensure that energy efficiency and material efficiency principles are key principles and promote energy savings, minimize energy waste in whichever way we can, building on these dossiers. And then also importantly, we need to commit to nature positive renewables and maintaining nature protection safeguards in renewable permitting. We need to make sure that the reform of the Repower EU package, we need to, sorry, we need to make, we need to reform the Repower EU package to avoid deregulation and missed citizen consultation. The reason I'm saying that is because the response to the crisis has been the package. And within that, within that package is a proposal to simplify issues of assessment and consultation. And we think that's not necessary. Okay, and so this is an area we can, we can give you lots of details on why this is important. Um, then of course, there's other issues as, as Jan mentioned, the UNFCCC and the COP. And maybe one uh, example to underline is that in, the, in our 10 tests, we're also putting some examples of where we think the Czech Republic can lead by example. So we see that shifting district heating to renewable non-emitting sources and promoting community-led renewable projects would be useful. And we understand that Prague has an interesting experience. So it would be interesting to see uh, Czech leading by example by building on the Prague example for other cities. With respect to biodiversity, um, there's various, various issues, but the key one clearly is the nature restoration law. This one Jan mentioned is coming out in a week, but it has been delayed twice. And there's still some concern that it may be delayed again because of forces arguing that we should focus on uh, the war in Ukraine rather than nature restoration. From our perspective, it's essential that it, it goes, it moves forward uh, next week. And second of all, just to give a detail, we think it's important to have overarching area-based restoration targets to restore at least 15% of EU's land area, river length and sea area by 2030, but also with binding requirements of member states. Okay, and there's of course the restoration law and there's a need to also not forget the ocean ecosystems, marine and coastal ecosystems. We have more than these three, but in the interest of time, I just wanna pick up one, but also highlight three so that you have, you have them in front of you, okay. The third issue is the in initiated transition towards sustainable food and agriculture. Um, so here, in some ways, our main one is resist the false arguments that are being promoted by those seeking to instrumentalize the war in Ukraine and, def and defend the status quo. We should stand firm to support the farm to fork strategy. So we hope that the Czech presidency will, will use its influence to to support the farm to fork strategy, which has already been agreed. And of course, there are other files, as Jan mentioned, the SR, the LUCF and so on. And there's a new file coming out on the sustainable use of pesticides uh, directive at the same time as the nature restoration law. The fourth one is ensure clean air towards zero environmental and health impacts. And our priority here, which is the same as yours, is to focus on an ambitious revision of the ambient air quality directive. We think that this can be and should be reformed so it's coherent with the World Health Organization guidelines by 2030. We also think they could be extended to include new emissions of pollutants like black carbon, ultrafine particles, and ammonia. So we're very much pleased that you have the ambient air quality directive as important uh, priority. Also an important point to mention is that when we're talking about air quality benefits, most of the measures taken to improve air quality will also lead to energy savings and greenhouse gas reductions. So there are some strong win-wins between air 
and between climate and between energy security in advancing an ambitious uh, ambient air quality directive. Of course, there's other issues like the Gothenburg Protocol. And in terms of leading by example, it would be great um, for the Czech National Air Pollution Control Program to be revised and to deliver uh, the national emission reduction targets established in the NEC directive. The fifth one is to tackle surface groundwater pollution and ensure clean water for all. So here, just to underline the widest issue of, uh, we hope that the council will very much support an ambitious rollout of zero pollution action plan. This is about prevention. Uh, it's about reducing at source. It's about systematically applying the do no harm principles and having no tolerance for poor implementation and keeping polluters accountable. And in this context, it's also heartening to hear that you, you want to have light as a, a particular issue because that fits in with this context and you can use the ZPAP as a hook to advance on light, even though there's no legislative proposal as such. But there are legislative proposals in this area, of course, the Environmental Quality Standards Directive, Groundwater Directive, and so on. The sixth one is about the call for a toxic-free environment and the ambitious implementation of the chemical strategy. So here, I want to focus on the timely and ambitious delivery of chemical law reforms, the reach and the classification labeling uh, regulations. There is a danger that these will be delayed. And if they're delayed, there's a danger that they will not be finished within this council and parliament and we will be left with quite a lot of uncertainty. So it's important that this be tackled as a priority um, and then and then it can it can create this the, um, the security and the clarity that we need. And these regulations, it's not just about timing, it's also about content. And one important issue of reach, for example, is that uh, polymers need to be included. Polymers were excluded from reach the first time around, but this is an opportunity to actually revisit that problem. And then, of course, again, you have other issues, uh, notably around rest, uh, reach restriction and so on. So the seventh one then is a zero pollution industry, a shift towards it. And here, um, the big issue is the ambitious overhaul of the industrial emissions directive that Jan Dusik mentioned is a complicated file. And it is. It has the potential to become carbon neutral, zero pollution, circular economy um, measure, but there are weaknesses in the current draft. At the moment, it's excluded that you take into account carbon dioxide in the IED. And this can be easily addressed by deleting one, one, um, one, one uh, clause. So I think there will be important for a Czech view to help make the IED really live up to its potential. Then on the eighth, it's a, give grasp the full potential of the circular economy through improved product policy, waste reduction and transparency. Jan, you already mentioned the batteries, so I'll focus on something else. Um, we need council position progress on eco-design of sustainable products, on the construction products regulation, on empowering consumers for the green transition. And of course, there's others again. Nine, and there's only two left, is strengthen the accountability and the rule of law and promote environmental justice. There's a number of measures here, but the one I'd like to highlight now is to promote the ambitious council position on the environmental crime directive. There's a need for an EU-wide definition of ecocide, and there's a, we need to ensure that all companies can and will be held criminally liable for committing environmental crimes. If there's a crime, then one should hold people liable. And of course, there's the Corporate Sustainable Due Diligence Directive and the Anti-SLAP and others. And finally, number 10, maintain a transformative Green Deal, foster social environmental economic justice and improve governance. And here, a hugely important file is the one on EU economic governance review. We need to reform the fiscal framework so it puts environmental and social goals, including gender justice, at the heart of the EU's economic governance. It's quite a, an important file. And then finally, just to end, again, to lead by example, um, that for, the, for, for your country to use your national recovery and resilience uh, plan funds and your social and cohesion funds to really prioritize energy savings, efficiency building, renovation, heat pump rollouts, 
low cost public transport, nature friendly renewable energy development, et cetera, et cetera, all to help with our energy independence from Russia, saving costs for our citizens and companies, strengthening the resilience to price rises and supporting climate mitigation. So those are 10 tests. Um, so the way forward, uh, as mentioned, you'll have a very, in, you'll inherit a lot of files from the French presidency and it will be an intense agenda. The Russian war is in Ukraine is being used by some to weaken the Green Deal, but it is clear that a strong Green Deal will help EU resilience and independence so Czech resolve and leadership is important to resist false solutions and show the right way forward by leading by example. Um, civil society have a vision uh, for how the Czech presidency can help and uh, promote this transformative agenda. We're willing uh, to engage constructively throughout uh, as we've already done with also with council letters, direct meetings, etc. And I would like to thank you also for the invitation for the informal council. I look forward to helping there. The 10 tests we shared with your colleagues last Friday night, very late. Um, we're happy to, sh we shared them with you. We're happy to listen to your suggestions on what's important files and asks. And we also included examples as to where your country can lead by example, but maybe there's other areas that, that we haven't thought about in these slides that you think your experience is very good and can inspire other member states. So what can we learn from you? So voila, that's very much. And if any of you are in Brussels, you're welcome to join the conference on Friday. Thank you.